Hello, VOD people. So let's see. We're trying to build something uh, using F sharp. And we've made it made something uh, out of it, it at least. We've made some types. We've made some functions. Oh, writer is being a bit slow. Let's see. There we go. Um, yeah, we made some types. We've made some functions. And um, <laughs> yeah, a uh, bit uncertain how to do everything yet. Um, I'm not too good at F sharp. That's why I'm trying it out. I'm also trying to learn F sharp while trying to uh, work um, according to the principles from uh, Domain Durian Design Made Functional, a book by Scott Lashin. And I've read up on it some since I last streamed. And <laughs> uh, I'm not, I, I, I kind of, I, I thought I could just skim through it, but I kind of realized uh, after like the first couple of chapters, that I probably need to read it more thoroughly. So I'm, I'm in the process of reading it again, basically. It's been a year since my last time, so I've forgotten quite a few things. But what I'm going to try to do is to implement something that I saw implemented in the book, which I kind of tried my hand at the last time, but didn't uh, get working properly. So let's see. I'm going to just open the book in the background here. You're not going to be able to see this, but it's, but I am. So that's going to help me. I'm actually going to just pop out this chat, pop out, move it over here where it's more visible, which is a bonus. There we go. Okay. So let's have a look, see here. Yes, this is all very fine. I just need to sh be able to see. Oh, okay. Um, way at the beginning. Yeah, this is what I. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. This is what what they what he calls constraint. Uh, they're basically single case unions, discriminated unions with only a single value. Which is to constrain the, uh, to, to prevent you from be, being able to create instances of data that you're not supposed to. So what I'm trying to build is basically an equipment manager, and the you should be able to um, log in as a user or an, or an administrator, and you should be able to select some piece of equipment that you want to borrow or lend or rather lend or rent uh, is more correct I think yeah so that's what I'm trying to build so let's see if we can get any of this working so I did start with defining a user and everything and yeah that might be right actually so what we want to start with, I think, is we already put in some types here, but I think that we kind of want to, I, I was, <laughs> I was, I was thinking that I want to create the restrained types for everything, which is a bit of boilerplate. Uh, actually, there was uh, blah, 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 blah did mention that you should have a look at a, a certain file from the examples to speed up the process. I should probably have a look at that. Um,
Okay. That wasn't. Maybe I should just do the do it the uh, the um, the inefficient way first. That's always a good um, good starting point, I think. Let's try that first. So we've got, for example, we've got the this name of a user. So in theory, if you want to restrict what kind of names a user can have, or, or rather, what designates a name, we could uh, create a module, a ma module called, hmm, we could call it name, or like a username. Oh, that's, that's going to be a conflict at some point. Uh, or we could just say that this is a string with a certain semantic behind it. But I think that we're going to go with user name. Yeah, that's going to be the module. So inside of this module, we're going to have a have a, um, a type called uh, name, mm. username, yep, which only ha uh, which is a discriminated union, which is basically like an, a, it's kind of a uh, uh, enum on steroids. So we're going to use that, and we're going to it's going to have a, just one case called username, and that's going to be it's going to have a value which is also called username. So this is properly confusing. I think I'm doing this right. No, 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 no. I'm not doing this right. It's going to have a value of string like this. Yes. So there is a module, which is kind of like a namespace. Uh, or you could almost think of it as a class, maybe, in object-oriented programming language, which has a, a nested union or enum called username, which has a case called, un called un username, which is wrapping a string. And the reason we want to do this is because we can make this private. So you can't access this directly, which is preferable because we don't want users to, or we don't want to create usernames um, manually. We want to limit it to using a, a create function. So <clears throat> uh, you've got a create function like this which is used to create a username. And uh, we can, we're can we able to kind of uh, do some checks before we create the username. So it's like a constructor of a sort, but it has some extra logic to validate the data before we actually create it. I think they call it smart constructors in the, in the book. Um, so at this point, we're able to <clears throat> validate, for example, that the um if user name dot length i think we can do this yeah length is um less than 1 um we could Let's see, return, uh, we're just going to return a result, I think, um, which is not how we do it. We return error, er, error, actually, and the error is going to contain some value, I think, if I remember this correctly, yep. Um, username must be at least one, eh, one character. Uh, and then we're going to go LF user name dot length is more than 
let's say 200. This is kind of silly. You shouldn't really limit names more than you should, uh, than you, <clears throat> if you could, because you can't really expect someone to have a certain length of name. Um, but let's just put 200 in here. It's probably going to be longer than any one you actually using this system would have. And it's, they're not going to be much people using it anyway. So yeah, it's just a thought exercise, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. User name must be less than 200 oh. characters. Like so. And if both of those are tr true, we're able to return a username. So then we're going to give it a username. And we're going to put in the user name, like so. So now we'll just have to find out everything I did wrong. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, let's see. I thought it would be able to s surmise from this that what I was thinking of. Maybe not. Um, let's see what it's complaining about here. Look up an object is indeterminate type. Yeah. You can't really figure out what type it is. Return may only be used within computation expressions. Right. Uh, can I do early returns in in F sharp? Well, I basically can just do this. Uh, like so. Uh, and remove these. Like so. This is complaining. All branches of an if expression. Ah, right. That's entirely correct so we need to put this in an okay so that put that puts that to right so this so as you can see writer is um is uh noticing that the username that i'm referencing referencing down here is the is, is the same as this username so it's not confusing that username with the type nor the module. So it's recognizing that I'm specifically instantiating uh, this uh, variant of the enum or the, the, the union. So this would be the type of the, uh, of the union and this is the variant of it specifically. So the return type of this, it's not easy to see, but can I click this? Uh, okay. <laughs> Why would I, click, I copy the clipboard? Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, it specifically says, yeah, that this is going to re return a result, which is okay or error, with a username. And that's going to be this type. But it can't figure out what username is over here, which is strange, because I thought it would be able to figure it out over here, because it knows this should be a string. Does it know that this is a string? I don't think you're going to see it. Yeah, no. Okay, so the over um, overlay is telling me that it's that it's a string, but it's not recognizing that over here, is it? Yeah, it is. Wait, what? Why is it complaining? Look up an object. Blah blah blah. Uh, prior to this program point, a type automation annotation may be needed to constrain the type of the object. Okay, is so it no? Ah, okay. So the problem is, it knows username is a string down here but it's not certain that it's a string up here because it might be something else that also has a length. For example, a list also has a length. So it might be a list over here, but down here, it's most certainly a string. So we actually need to specify explicitly that this is indeed a string. And now it's not gonna complain anymore. So. Now we're able to specify down here for user that this is going to be a username, which means that we're going to be certain that this is, oh, we need to, uh, we're going to put this like so, uh, name. So we're going to be certain that this is the correct kind of value where it has at least one length and less than 200 or, or uh, 200 less. So it must be 200 characters or less, basically. There we go. Right. So let's do the same for a phone number. So there is a way, uh, apparently in the book mentions that there is a way to, to um, remove a lot of this um, boilerplate. 
to make it a bit simpler. Uh, I didn't bother looking it up. <laughs> uh, I, I always think it's a good practice to kind of do something manually a few times just to kind of feel the the grading or rather the why it's good to have like a like a shorthand for doing something. Um, so that's what I'm basically doing now. So phone number, private phone number of string. Never store phone numbers as numbers. That doesn't really work out once you add a plus in there. So yeah. We could have a lot of uh, silly, um, silly rules here saying that you need to start the number with a plus 47, for example, for Norway or anything like that. But we're not going to do that. We're, we're basically, yeah, we're basically just gonna, gonna, mm, yeah, we're gonna do one silly rule. We're gonna do one. We're gonna, we're gonna say if phone number dot length, I should probably just put the type in with at once string which is to type there we go uh is um not equal to eight then return an error uh, phone number must be eight digits uh lf Um, I think there is a way to like, uh, <laughs> now we're going to get into like F sharp specific stuff here. So can we do like rather hmm, list oh, array from, no, uh, uh, if we do phone number, Okay, the, okay, to car array. Char array? Char array, probably. So now it's a character array. And then we're gonna do a array. Uh, all, every. Um, <laughs> there is one that needs you to specify that all the for all test if elements of the array satisfy the given predicate. Yeah, that's the one. What does for all two do? Test if all corresponding elements of the array satisfy the given predicate pairwise. Oh, right. So you get two every two, basically. Okay, so array for all, we need to specify a function, which are funk, that doesn't seem right. It's fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so fun, uh, we're gonna take an input, which is a which is a character. So we'll just call that C. And then we're gonna do char is, oh, wait a second. We could probably just shorten this to char. Char ah is digit. Uh, and that's gonna return a uh, Boolean value. So if that is uh, the case, uh, well, if this, um, yeah. So I'm basically, I want to check that Blah, 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 for all. And then I'm <laughs> like a Boolean reverse. <laughs> uh, how do I, how do I flip it easily? Mm, don't think I can. Let's just do like a fun B and then just return the opposite of B. Is that possible in F sharp? Yeah, probably. So basically, this is a silly way to, to reverse the boolean. So 
what we're doing here is we're transfer uh, we're changing the phone number to be a character array because it's a string when it when it is received up here then we check that for for all the items for all the characters in the phone number they should all be digit so we're using this is digit to check that are all digits and then if they are all digits we flip it to be false. So if one of them, if one of the characters is not a digit, this will return true, which means we will return an error saying phone number can only contain digits, like so. And then in oh, the last case becomes uh, writer is being a bit weird. The OK case where we return a phone number, which we do by writing phone number and putting the phone number inside it, like so. So now we're able to create phone number that we know are correct. We go down here, we say that this is supposed to be a phone number of such a type. There we go. Password, this is... This is going to be a hash anyway, so it's not going to follow any particular rules, I think. So that's going to, that's fine. User role. We should probably do something similar to user role, uh, but we're going to pass it for now. Uh, let's have a look at the equipment. So we're going to do some of the same stuff. Maybe we should just generalize name. I think that's probably better. You know what? We're just going to generalize this. I, I just decided. So we're going to call it string 200 to indicate that it's a string that's max 200 uh, characters long. String 200. And writer is thinking. Yep, that's good. And we're going to change this. String 200. Uh, yes, rename the related symbols. Thank you. So it renames this automatically and everything else is working splendidly. Yes, we're all very happy with how that turned out, which means that we're going to use a string 200 here too, just for simplicity's sake. So this is a details thingy. So I think we're going to do a similar thing here where we're going to just create like a string a thousand. So this is a bit silly doing the string 1000 with the string 200s, but I'm just going to get into the habit of like typing these out and writing F sharp code. So you'll just have to bear with me here. Uh, string 1000 on a private string, oops, string 1000 of string, let create string 1000, uh, which is a string indeed, if um, string 1000 dot length is less than one, then return error saying um, string must be at least one thousand well, one character. Let's actually go up here because this is name now. It should not. Um, okay, why doesn't it select that? Oh, use as IDE shortcut. There we go. Uh, um, string. Boop. Uh, yep. Elif string 1000 dot length is more than 1000 over 1000. Anyway, uh, string must be 1000 characters or less. And if none of those are the case, just do an else which we always found funny when we when we had programming when we when we were taught programming in, in hmm what's that then 
college, maybe? No, that doesn't sound right. High school? I don't know. When we were like 17, I think. Because uh, else uh, is uh, a woman's name in Norwegian. <laughs> That's why. You always put an else at the end. You just need an else. And we always refer to it as, as if it were a person. Which we found funny, as you do when you're 17. I, I say that as if I don't find it so funny still, but I still make that joke. This many years later. Uh, where was I? String 1000, I think? Yeah. All right, this needs to be a string 1200. This should be a string. <laughs> well, string 1000, it sounds super silly, but here we are. Uh, so this is the rate, which is how much it costs to rent the thing. The equipment. So actually, this is going to be one of the, those interesting things because we're now able to uh, kind of encapsulate some of the rules for the re uh, for the rate for the rent rate uh, inside of um, these uh, create things. So we're able to kind of enforce these rules pretty effectively in a single place. So it, it is validation. I'm, I'm not. I've worked with validating data before, but I kind of like that you kind of have to always uh, be aware if you're in entering re a, a correct data or not. <clears throat> uh, private rate of uh, I've said an int. I think my my thought here is that it will be input. Uh, well, well, we we store it as uh, euro, which is a hundredth of a kona, which is the, well, uh, currency in Norway. So, yeah, the, the euro is basically like a cent, right, on the, on the dollar or the uh, euro. Uh, let create, uh, and we're going to receive a, a value, number, number maybe, value. Should we specify that this should be an int? No, it's going to recognize that pretty quickly, I think. So, uh, we get, uh, yeah. So, if value is less than, uh, hmm, should not be, uh, if it's less than zero, then, I'm sorry, or uh, HEI. If the value is less than zero, return an error saying rate can not be less than zero. Elif. The question becomes, should they, should they be able to set anything less than a corner? We're not really, I mean, when it comes to monetary values, we don't have any coinage for anything less than one uh, one corner at the in our way. We we have no coins for euro. We got rid of those. Oh, it's actually quite a few years ago now. <laughs> I realize. So, the only time we're using euro is when we're paying digitally, which we mostly are. But still, we well we. Still use Euro quite frequently. Well, yeah, sure. Should be able to set Euro. What? Wait, what? Are we? Hmm. Should there be an upper limit? Nah, probably not. Can be less than zero. Sure. If not, it's all okay. Set the rate to the value. I'm not sure why I didn't just call this rate like I did the others. Oh, what did I do now? And there. Uh, rate. Okay, we're able to create this. This should go instead of this. So this is a rate, a rate. We can probably open these modules to make it easier to work with, but I'm not going to do that for now. Um, just because. 
rate start day. This just indicates if the rate should be running from the first day you, uh, you uh, lend something or the next day. Those are the only two options at the moment, the first or the second day. Let's see, rent duration limit. This is for how many days you're allowed to rent something. So we're gonna do give it the same treatment as everything else. Rent duration limit. Now I type rent duration limit. Yeah, this is very boilerplate-y, but yeah. So as I said, there is a better way to do this, but we're not gonna do that today. Uh, so you should be, um, if rent duration limit is less than one, you should be able to lend it at least one day. It doesn't make any sense if not. Um, we return error saying, uh, rent duration limit uh, can not be less than one. Uh, if it's more than like 10 maybe, I think there is a, uh, should there be like an upper limit of how long things should be allowed to know? That feels kind of weird. Let's just do this. Uh, okay, it worked out. Okay, that is, <laughs> that <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. That is a reference to Phineas and Ferb for those who like to watch that. Um, <laughs> uh, rent duration limits and put that in here. Yeah. Rent duration limit dot rent duration limit. There we go. Then there is a reservation. The reservation is what happens when a user says they want to rent something. I observe that we have reserver and equipment here. I'm not really sure if that's how we want to keep doing it. I'm thinking. Hmm. Ah, we're gonna probably gonna keep it like this for now. Right, we got the ID, we got these, we got start date and end date. And these, I'm a bit, um, I'm a bit uh, uncertain how much work we wanna do with these. I'm kind of thinking that we maybe should just do like, uh, oh, sorry, oh, blah, 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 blah. maybe we should do like, th these should always be at least today. You can't really reserve something back in time. So we could do a module for like, uh, like today or later. Let's call it that. Type today or later, which is a private today or later of daytime. Like so. Yes, I know what a daytime is. Uh, let create today or later if today or later not that one, this one, is less than daytime. I know that the, this is gonna, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, dot date, which is gonna, which is gonna return the the date uh, daytime without the with with the time set to all zeros basically so midnight of the of the date so if it's less than this day 
then return error saying um, date must be set to today or a later date. Ooh, sure. Else create the thing. So it's an okay with today or later, with the today or later inside of it. So both of these are gonna to be today or later, dot today or later. There's gonna be a comment, right? And this is uh, string 1000. Is settled, bool. So bool is one of these things that are <laughs> I, I heard someone come uh, say that a bool is just an item waiting to happen. And <laughs> that, that is uh, not something I necessarily disagree with in a lot of cases. But it's also very, very unclear what you're actually... Um, when you use this anywhere, it's just a bool. So you don't have any context to say what, it, what this actually is. So, is settled. This is probably not going to survive in this state, but we're going to so we're going to leave this here. What I, what the main modeling made functional says is there should be be a process or a function that turns the reservation from being settled, from being not settled to being settled. So this should probably be like an unsettled reservation, or rather this is the reservation, and then there's a settled reservation type, which is might be very identical, might be, look very much like this, but it is settled. So that's the difference. It's a different type altogether. So you, instead of having like a type with a Boolean flag saying if it's settled or not, which you probably would do if you're doing this in an object-oriented style. What you could rather do is change the type altogether. And what you're doing then is that you can create other functions which say you can only do this with a set settled reservation, which means that the type system actually will enforce that you don't pass in invalid data. So if you just have the reservation with the Boolean flag, you always have to check, well, is the Boolean flag set to true for it being settled before I can continue this function? And that, that works. I mean, that's what a lot of people do, but it's always, uh, or I would I would argue that it's, better or more nice for the developer if the type system can catch this for you, which means that you will um, you will discover this during compile time instead of at runtime. So if your code is wrong because you're trying to pass an unsettled reservation into something that needs a settled reservation, the type system will actually alert you of this. This is part of the... Um, make uh un no what's what's it make invalid states unrepresentable basically you shouldn't be able to create invalid states because the type system won't allow you uh let's see string 1000 is not defined dun 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 i did type it correctly didn't i yeah i did find this is this a problem further up too? Uh, string, oh. There we go. Ah, okay. So, there we go. String 1000. So yeah, we're, we're gonna leave this like this for now, but we're probably gonna change this at some point. And just say that a reservation, this is default state of the reservation until it's settled. Did I put this in Git at all? Let's see. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Sorry about the flickering. It's OBS freaking out because I put another window on top of the window that I'm capturing. It looks like I did. I did some of that. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. 
So I put in the types and I've got these. Right. We're probably going to put, let's see, these two. Let's put those in here. Okay. And then we're going to create a new branch here. <laughs> here we go. Add more complex types. Okay. So next I'm going to try to define, define some of the workflows basically. So let's do like a simple thought experiment. One of the requirements is that a user should be able to reserve a piece of equipment. Is that a bit complex maybe? It sounds really silly when I say, like, oh, that sounds really complex. It shouldn't really be, but I'm trying to do everything according to these guidelines, which I kind of want to make work. Okay, look at that. Okay, this is interesting. We got a lot of errors now because we're, we've changed the type, so they're not simple types anymore. So this should now be a string 200 create, whoa, 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 create with some baker. And this is giving us an error because this expression was expected to have type string 200, string 200. Uh, but return result, right. That's because we made it like that. Um, can I just unwrap this and somehow? Unwrap. <laughs> That's what it's called in, in Rust. Um, let's see. Boop, boop. Dot value. Get a hash code. No, that doesn't. That don't help me none. Um, result dot map error. Bind map. None of these are what I want. I just want to extract the value. I don't think I can actually. Uh, Uh, let's just create a function that does that then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's just call it unwrap actually. <laughs> that's what it's called in Rust. So that's all I can think now. Uh, and it takes a result and, uh, uh, let's do, uh, oh, what's it called in when? Result. <laughs> what is the uh, pui? Ah, match. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. Match result with. Here we go. <laughs> uh, what we're going to, what are we going to uh, match it with? With. Um, okay. Which has a value, how do I extract the value? Do I just write it with space or do you use parentheses? Hmm, let's see, are there any examples in here? Match, 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 match. Um, okay, um, match, uh, or rather, no, ma match, space, hmm, that didn't help, uh, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. No, you just use space. Okay. Okay. And that's going to be the value. And we're going to return that value. 
and if it's an the error, that's gonna really have like one of these, and then we're just gonna go fail with error. So fail with is gonna throw an exception, I think. Throw a system exception, exception. Yeah, that's the one with the following message. So instead of here, we can just call on wrap on this, which will return the string. And if it doesn't follow the um, the rules that we specified, it will just uh, crash the whole program. We can change that later. So this should be a phone number. We have certain rules for phone numbers, which we've already defined, and we can unwrap that afterwards. So this might seem a bit um, wordy at the moment, and you're not wrong. Uh, the thing is, though, that over time, we will be able to um, verify a lot of this information uh, or a lot of this will be cleaned up and ha hidden away, basically. That's a short story. <laughs> um, this is string 200. Yeah. String 200. Create. And then unwrap it. So we're gonna, we're gonna be able to to um, create instances of all of these without having to unwrap and everything, which is gonna be good. String one thousand create on ah there we go unwrap great. So this will be divided by a hundred, right? So this is actually. 50 kroner, 50 kroner, not 5,000, um, uh, not that one, rate, create, and unwrap it. And this is the last one. This is rent, duration, limit, create, for and then unwrap that too. And this is one of the things that I really like about um, functional programming languages li like F Sharp, which is I can create this unwrap function and I can use it as if it's actually part of the existing types or the existing system, right? Because if you wanna make like extension functions in a lot of object-oriented programs, it is possible in a lot of them, at least newer ones, but they might often feel a bit tacked on. I know some languages do this better than others, like Kotlin and Swift specifically have pretty robust extension functionality. Uh, but C Sharp is sometimes a bit limited by the fact that they are only supporting methods, not static functions or static methods, not properties or anything like that, which sometimes feels a bit limiting and it kind of breaks the um, how, the API and how it looks. So it's not a big deal in most cases, but uh, it feels more... It, Feels more integrated in F sharp. That's all I can say about that. Yeah. String 200, create and unwrap. I think I got a hair in my eye and it's not going away, which is annoying.
Okay. Uh. Let's see, 22 more errors. Oh my, holy bananas. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> String 200, I'll create. Oh man, the, the eye is killing me. Whew. Uh, nope. Rate. Create. Um, unwrap. Rent duration limit dot create unwrap. <laughs> um, uh, phone number dot create. Well, this turned out to be a lot of work, um, or at least a lot of repetitive work. You know, the best kind. Uh, string 200. I just learned yesterday that John Mulaney is apparently getting divorced. Random fact, I don't know where. I just reminded myself of him, which is why I'm mentioning it. I don't know. I don't know why it interests me, really. Um... I don't know who she is. I have have never had any interest in knowing who she is before. I just know that he's he's mentioned her in some of his comedy. And I don't know. It just felt like if you're at that trust level, maybe things will work out, I guess. I don't know. Because it didn't seem like it was in spite. Just a thought. Uh, well, this is interesting. We're able to create re uh, reservations which start back in time because we said we're, that's not allowed. But it clearly is <laughs> uh, because you might have reserved something previously, but not when you created, uh, basically. So... That's a thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Apparently, I get really yawny when I go on stream. Maybe I should end it. It's kind of late anyways, so. Um, let's fix these and come back to the... Um, to the date times that I... Uh, done wrong. Holy moly, there are a lot of these, aren't there? Da, 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 da. Phone number go create and unwrap. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're at the bottom, or at least you can see the bottom. This is a name which is 200. That's missing a knee. Then we're gonna unwrap it. This is a string 1000 create. With some unwrap. This is a rate.create. Then unwrapped. And lastly, but not actually lastly, because there's more stuff below. Rent duration limit. Create. Oh. Oh. Unwrap. And the last one for now. String one. Thousand create unwrap. Okay, let's have a look. These dates, should I do something about them? I kind of wanna. Uh, let's see. What should we do? What should we do? The reservation can clearly be made back in time. So.
we're just going to rename this before we start using it somewhere else. And we're going to name it a a date. This is some weird choices that I'm making, but we're just going to roll with it and see how it turns out. Uh, yes, of date time. We're not going to do the check thingy because we're going to allow most times. Should we maybe limit it to something? Like, shouldn't be able to lend stuff from before a certain date or something? Hmm. Let's not. But what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the date like so. Um, that f also feels like a bad idea. Actually. Yeah, you know what? We're actually going to make it different things. So this is going to be a start date. That is significant because... Uh, this is what's going to be a start date, start date, like so, I mean that this, uh, value right here, it's also going to change, that's going to be date, start date, no less, uh, like so, and we're gonna pass in the date, right? Why is this complaining? Oh, right. I probably need to do this. No, 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 I don't. Why art thou complaining? Uh, da, 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 da. It's uncertain what start date is, apparently. Uh, well, yeah, okay. I'm not using it directly, I guess. There we go. So that's going to be a start date, and this is going to be an end date. Now, why are they significantly different? Well, uh, in one way, they are phys philosophically different. So they solve different things. One is a start date and one is an end date. The, uh, they might seem like the same thing, but one is um, signifying the start of a period and the other the end, which is very relevant when you're trying to calculate stuff based on that. So, for example, I won't be able to, uh, when you pick a date and that's the start date, I want that date time that represents that start date to start at midnight. So, uh, a date with just zeros for time, which is what you get when you call dot date. It's a date time with all the time components set to zero, which means this is the uh, this is midnight that of that date. Okay. So, what's so special about end date then? Well, end date is going to represent not the start of the day, but the end of the day, right? And what I'm going to most likely do is I'm going to represent the end of the day by taking the next day and something less than that, right? So, when you specify the end date... What I'm going to do in all my calculations are I'm going to add a day and then check if the thing that I'm checking is less than that. And that is easier than saying um, some date 23, 59, 59, uh, which is clunky to work with. And besides, it doesn't take into account leap seconds, which really isn't something you should take into uh, to consideration, but it's just easier to check with a less than the next day. It also kind of removes a lot of assumptions regarding the um, whether or not a day has, uh, how, many, how many seconds a day has, which is, believe it or not, not a constant. <laughs> For most things it is, but sometimes it's not. For example, when we... Um, uh, when we adjust our watches or clocks, uh, the days are not 24 hours anymore. They might be 23 or 25. So yeah, there are a lot of considerations to think of. 
Anyway, let's create this and date. There are no invalid end dates. And uh, oh, dates. I'm actually going to do, 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 do like this, get the date of this too. Um, just to make it clear that we're representing a, a date, not a point of time on inside of that day. I think that's, I think that's an important difference. Start date dot start date almost sounds like start date. Like so, and if we now head back to functions, we can see that, oh, these are not working, but that's fine. We just do start date dot create, and we pass that in, and we unwrap it. So I'm returning results from these. They probably uh, could have just had, I'm, not, I'm, I'm uncertain whether or not we're gonna have validation later. And while I don't think it's a good pattern to start designing stuff you don't really need yet, <laughs> I realize that I'm saying that as I type out something that's designed, which I don't really need yet. Um, what was I saying? Anyway, I'm going to keep it as is. End date, uh, create, and unwrap it afterwards. Unwrap. Okay, so let's see. Why are you complaining? You're at a time? Yes. Successive arguments should be separated by spaces, tupled, or parameterized. Are there successive? Okay. It, it thinks there is, so basically there is. Let's just wrap this nicely inside of some parens. Go back here. Put this in here. Same for this. Can I maybe do this? Yeah, you can. Let's just put some stuff like that over there. Okay, format that code. There we go. Okay, not what I would have chosen, but sure. Oh, right, it prefers doing this. Well, actually, I actually like that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of feels more tidy. Hmm. Would not thought that. Okay, so I've done some cleanup. I need to read more of the book. I ju can just feel that I'm, I'm missing key parts here. I should probably, probably, I should have drawn like a, um, like a diagram showing what are the different states of the program and how do we transition between them which is really helpful for deciding what kind of what code you actually need. But that would be too much um, uh, too much preparation. So we're not gonna do that. I just now realized that I got like um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve followers, which are all named the same uh, underscore something different. So if those are not bots, I don't know what is. What are oh, conjugations? Anyway, doesn't really matter. They are not really people, I would think. Yeah, I can't create it two hours ago. That's, well, they didn't spam my chat. That's something, I guess. Well, anyway, I'm going to end it there. Uh, it's been about an hour, I think. Yeah, now an hour and five minutes. OBS claims. So, yeah. Making some headway with F Sharp. Um, going to be interesting to, uh, to read some more from the book. I really regret not writing much code when I read the book the first time that would re would have really helped with getting uh, grokking the whole thing um, 
but at least I'm going getting some writing done now. And I think while it would probably be very educational, kind of just copying whatever he writes in the book, I think that the act of translating the knowledge to a different domain and to a different code base is actually making me it's making me actually understand the content instead of just thinking that I understand it by copying, right? Because I have to actually understand what he's doing and why he's doing it to be able to implement it in my thing, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah. Anyway, enough of my ramblings. Once you get me started, I'm like a waterfall, I guess. Thank you for um, <laughs> sticking with me to the end. Hope to see you next time. Snuck is.